everybody. Welcome today. Today is just not a great day. It's a fabulous day because I'm here with two of the best compadres in the planet. Welcome to the three podcasters. Walk into a bar. My name's Stu Turley, President CEO of the Sandstone Group. And I got two some really cool padres here. You ever had that weird uncle? When at a Christmas party, he would start saying, these three guys walk into a bar. I got the other two guys right here. We got RT. RT is the head honcho over there at Picos Operating. He has the Crude Truth podcast. Welcome, RT. How are you? Oh, oh, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me back. And I can't believe uh, this bar allowed us to come back for a second. I can't even. You two were right. They have very low standards here. That's all I can say. Yes, the standards here must be low to allow us three in here. I'll tell you what. Absolutely. And then we have the David Blackman. Not only the David Blackman. But the David Blackman. And I mean, you are a Forbes contributing author. You have the energy question. You have the energy absurdity of day. You yes. have the energy transition international version. And you also are now in the number three of the black oil uh, influential. Hey, man, state. I was number two. You was number, number two. two. You're number three. I'm number three. Yes. I want to give a shout out to Black Man. Mountain. You're number nine. Yeah, you're number nine. I'm just glad I made the list, guys. I, I, I think they got you and me reversed. <laughs> no, I, I, no, no, I think they got. I, I think they messed up. I've just put me in the top there, ten, and, and it is cool. I am going to brag. I did have eight of the top people. Now, eight of the eight of everybody there, I interviewed. Including myself, because I talk to myself. <laughs> you do, you do. We worry so, about that, Stu. With that, we got an action-packed discussion here. I mean, we've got some things going on. David, let's kick it off to you first. Oh, uh, so what was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is, uh, I want to talk about this, brutal. right? Well, he's, he's, he's continuing to buy oil and gas stocks. No, but we're and, transitioning out of it, I thought. Well, that's that's what I thought, too. And the Biden administration keeps saying we're going to get rid of it in 10 years, right? But Bloomberg writes a story on Tuesday that uh, is, is wondering why Warren Buffett continues to buy oil and gas stocks. Right. So I answered Bloomberg's question in the Daily Caller the next day. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? It, it, <laughs> oil and gas was the top performing sector in the whole stock market in 2022 it's continuing to perform well in 2023 josh young over at bison interest says it's incredibly undervalued the the oil and gas stocks are very undervalued and and you know the narrative the the energy transition narrative says well it's all going to go away in 10 years and you know they're going to have all these stranded assets but what does warren buffett continuing to buy up you know, shares of Oxy, shares of Chevron, shares of ConocoPhillips, and on and on and on. What does that tell us? It tells us that just like the executives at the oil and gas companies, the big investors don't believe any of that stuff, right? right. Nobody's buying the stranded assets nonsense. They're not going to be stranded assets. We're going to keep using oil and gas for 50 years. I had interviewed, I've interviewed two CEOs in the service industries for oil and gas, and I I can't say who they are, just in the last two weeks. And they both told me they believe their company will still be in business 50 years from now. Right. Well, so that's why Warren Buffett (laughs) is continuing to invest in these undervalued oil and gas stocks. Wow. And, uh, you know, if Warren Buffett's investing in it, then that's what I want to do, too, right? And uh, so I need to call my investment advisor tell him to get me into more more oil and gas stocks. You know, uh, you mentioned these stocks and, and how they're undervalued right now. You know, as an EMP operator or as an EMP and operator, uh, you know, I've done nothing but watch oil basically go from seventy dollars to eighty in the right. last fourteen days. Yeah. So, uh, and it's not quite at eighty; it's at seventy nine and change uh, as we record today. And it's like it just makes no sense that oil's going up and it still seems undervalued right now. Yeah. You know, uh, do you do you guys still think uh, that we may see hundred dollar oil this year? I, I'm definitely not thinking it, but do y'all think so? I think Brent could get there. Uh, I think Brent could get there sometime September, October time frame. And, you know, WTI just depends on what happens the rest of the year. But, uh, you know, the market itself is firming up. China's growth, there was an optimistic report about that here on Monday. Um, 
so you know if china continues to 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 increase its economic growth and we don't have another global pandemic of any kind yeah i could see that well with the fed let me ask this because demand is always a critical feature of this the 25 points are they going to do another 25 what is the market going to react oh on the interest rate increase yeah Yeah. because if the interest if the uh, market tanks recession kicks in right. there goes demand right right and, and so and that's always the wild card right it, it is a huge wild card yeah. but what i think about warren buffett and bp and shell they're all i mean the massive run from renewable projects is in full swing I mean, they are doing them, but they're downscaling them. Right, and they're upscaling investment in the core business. The the thing, and 70% of the increase in CapEx is going to Africa. I mean, there is a ton of drilling activity going on for Africa. Yeah, and South America, too, you know, if you're ExxonMobil and Apache. Right. And Hess, but uh, yeah. Uh, The other point to make about Warren Buffett while we're talking about this. Oh, yes. Is he's not just investing in any oil and gas companies, he's investing in big shell producers. Yes. In the Great Permian point. Basin, right? Chevron, Oxy, ConocoPhillips, some of the biggest players the in the Permian Basin. You know Is he doing any in the Marcellus? Um, I don't know. He may be, may have that in his portfolio, but that's not what's making the news. I don't know yeah, what his okay. whole portfolio is. Let me ask you all this. Wasn't it, didn't Chevron and Oxy go after Anadarko a few years ago and, and Oxy won that bid? Oxy, yeah, Oxy outbid uh, Chevron. And, and, and then, Warren Buffett came in with $10 billion backing that investment. Right. And yeah. so I find it interesting that right now here he is investing in Chevron and Oxy. Right. And kind of like that kind of makes me wonder. I mean, <laughs> well, he had a big stake in Conoco Phillips before he bought the big Oxy, stake in right. Oxy. Yeah. And, and when and when you look, Conoco Phillips has already merged, right? If you obviously Conoco Phillips, um, you know, when you go back and look at the history, I believe, and you know, hey, fact checkers out there, please uh, double check. But you know, I think Chevron is a very very distant cousin, a relative of Standard, and so is Exxon and uh, Mobil. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it'd be real interesting to see what he does if, if down the road he wants to combine this Chevron and Oxy thing. Uh, I mean, if he's buying stocks, <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I just, you know, I mean, other than buying stocks right now, I know um, it's just real interesting time to, to definitely be buying them. I guess yep. that's the best thing to say. Uh, well, you, you know, know uh, ener- energy of all types is where you want to put your money. No. Commodities and energy in a depression get people rich. Right, right. And now you have all these subsidies going into the renewable space. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that just helps uh, increase the value of those stocks. And uh, So on the global market, what do you think? Okay, let me ask you this. You had an excellent article. What was that article about? Oh, yes. I, I wrote an article about how with the transition to electric vehicles, how can oil and gas adapt in into the future? And, uh, you know... I, there's definitely probably more of a market in places like China and Asia, and correct me uh, if I'm wrong again, uh, for electric vehicles than there are here in, in America. Plus, uh, you know, we can't afford them. Not everybody can afford them here. So I don't see how technically an electric vehicle today or tomorrow or even five years from now can truly impact the combustible engine and the purchase and sell of gasoline around the, around the world. I don't. Th- I don't think it can either, and I, I. I think increasingly, people are beginning to understand that. That's why they got lots full of them everywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, on the car lot. Well, not only that, but I mean, when when it's when a low end vehicle, and this is kind of true anywhere, but when a low end electric vehicle is now fifty or sixty thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Um, but of course, then I did read a report uh, that said I think in the last five years, all vehicle costs have gone up thirty percent. That's a right. chunk of change. And uh, I just don't know how the average American can handle that right now, uh, especially with the fact that we don't have, um, you know, with the inflation where it is. And obviously wages have not gone up. And that could be part of the, you know, the right side or left side shtick is we need to raise the minimum wage to fight this. 
But, you know, once again, once you raise the minimum wage, that means the cost of everything else goes up again. Right. So, you know, you know. Uh, boy, I, I think you're on to something. And I, I really, I want an electric vehicle. When the batteries are uh, re, uh, renew, re, uh, recyclable, mm-hmm. when they're not going to blow up on your house, <laughs> there, I just looked at an article this morning. Mm-hmm. There is a uh, cargo ship yeah. coming out. I can't remember where it was. It's out on the Pacific it, Ocean. It's burning up, and burning two up. people three, have been killed. Three yeah, people. Three, uh, uh, 3,000 cars on that, and they're burning so intense, it's going to be 100%. Yeah. Uh, so, total. okay, let's let's talk about this article. What is the gist? So, obviously, there's a cargo ship with electric vehicles in the Pacific Ocean that's burning right now. An EV yeah. battery blew up and started the fire. there's no way that you're going to be able to put it out. Wow. No way. And you can't put it out. No, you, you can't. can't. It's it too hot. The it's ship is a... going to sink. they got to get everybody off. Okay, so uh, I was going to have a crayon for today, and I ran out of time. So on a, uh average car, there's tons and tons of critical earth minerals that are required just to build it. In an EV battery. you're talking about. Yes, yeah. just to build it. So if you have 3,000 cars... With all that, I was trying to figure out with a crayon. I went to Oklahoma State, so that's a little tough. Right. <laughs> but I was going to figure out how many tons just went to the bottom of the ocean and then all the pollutants because the poison that it burns off, this thing is not an eco-friendly yeah. crash. Oh, man. No, it's, it's an environmental disaster, and uh, we'll see if the news media bothers to cover it. I right? hope so. Because I it's do. a preferred industry. Uh, yeah, it, if this was exactly my yeah, point. If I this was, was internal combustion engine cars, and that fire had been caused by uh, an internal combustion engine blowing up, you know, filled with gasoline, this would be front page news in every newspaper in America. But right. It's an EV ship filled with EVs, and yeah. you got to go to secondary and tertiary uh, news sources to, to even read about it. Yeah. It was on the way from Germany to Egypt. From Germany to Egypt. Okay, so it's in the Atlantic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you talk about front page news, and, and I hate to bring it up, but uh, I know the Houston Chronicle uh, had a horrific picture of an oil well, uh, a pump jack unit. Uh, those for those of that, those are the ones that go up and down, you know. And uh, yeah, as, as, as you see me here, wave like, at us. Yeah, it looks like I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was a trail of oil uh, in the picture, and it looked like yeah. it was an aerial view. And from what I could just see, it looked like it was actually, and they're trying to say it was a uh, uh, an abandoned well. Yeah, a and long it, abandoned well. And, yeah. and it could be, but I'm, I, I, as an operator, I don't see a lot of abandoned wells like that that would have a trail of oil just sitting yeah, you there. Kinda, so I'm you kind of wonder about that. Yeah, you? I kind of wonder about that picture myself. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I do know that the uh, state of Texas is one of the leading places in the world that has clean oil and gas regulations. What I mean by that is, one, we're the most, yep. we're very strict and stringent. Next to Colorado, I think we're, we're number two. And two, uh, what I mean by that is that we follow these strict and stringent rules to the cross T and dotted I. Right. Uh, in fact, um, I had a great opportunity to talk to a, a uh, somebody there in Austin and foreign countries actually come to the state of Texas to find out how we produce clean oil and gas here. Yeah. Uh, so we are the standard when it comes to the world. So uh, that, that picture, it, uh, again, it, uh, it had to do with um, uh, abandoned wells. Um, right. You know, I just, I just would like it's to out know somewhere where that somewhere in the was. Permian, right? Oh, uh, who, who knows? I mean, it could have been I mean, anywhere. You yeah, know? it could have been uh, AI altered. You well, know, man, you y'all talk about that. Okay, sidetrack. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. Okay, have y'all seen the new iPhones where you can take a picture yeah. and you can hold down a part of the picture that you want to take out of the picture? Right. And then so there's no background, no nothing. So if you've got like a real cool kid coming down a slide and on a playground and all you want is the kid, right? You can pull the kid been out there of for the years. picture. And you're still on a flip phone. Well, I know it's magic. I know that it's magic. You leave my flip phone alone. Sir. I like my flip phones. 
And if any of my friends are listening, they know that I've had flip phones since 1999 when Nokia came out with the, they got rid of the brick and they added just that little extra you're, part you're to it. You're one of my great friends. Yeah, I used to have one of those. Technology challenge, dude. Yeah. Technology. You and my wife. Now, you are doing better, I have to admit. It's really kind of embarrassing that I'm more high tech uh, than he is. I, I, I walked my into age. that one today. Yeah, three man. Podcasts, I got man. kids older than this guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I got underwear <laughs> older than both of you. Oh man, uh, yeah, yeah. We're not talking underwear. We're today. not talking underwear today, Steve. Oh, okay, sorry. No, no. Okay, I had to tell them no. They were going to bring him a fresh pair. But, oh yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, around the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, man, Fred speaking Fred of Fred the house, um, shout out again uh, to the Flying Saucer right. here in Fort Worth. Uh, uh, we are back here again this week. Thank you very much to Josh, the general manager, and Mike, the manager, right. uh, for allowing us to come back out here for a second time. Uh, this is great, guys. This it is, is, this is are, awesome. And I'm looking forward to some events in, in uh, September that we're going to have as a team and uh, really start figuring out where we're going on site. Taking a, uh, the road show. The, well, I tell you, you know, um, it's it's just really a great time. And, I mean, here we are. We can kind of get off track a little bit, just like we do when we're, we're all each in our, our – you right. two are in your bunkers. Um, but, man, <laughs> to get you two out here, I mean uh, – Yeah, it's hard getting me out of the it house. It is man. hard. And uh, so for two weeks in a row, thank you guys. And uh, and thank you again to the city of Fort Worth for letting us come back out and uh, to the Flying Saucer. Oh, you bet. Um, so I, I had a great uh, interview with uh, Matthew Lowenstein of SSC, FSC Inc., a survey company for the oil and gas industry. And it's like we talked about how the will to work has gone and that participation trophies and just letting people slide is where this whole thing started. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm, I, we're here to win. We're here to be on top. Uh, you know, somebody has to be first, and unfortunately, somebody does have to be last. And I don't want America to be last. And all those people that are trying to get here, they want to be first. And I admire that. Now they do yeah. need to figure out a better way to come. Okay, but they're literally dying to get to this yeah. great nation. Well, I'm not going to disagree with anything <laughs> you guys just said because I agree, and I've got about 19 other things that I would and love and to if add this was it. a And if but, this was a South Park <laughs> episode, I'd be going, they took my job! <laughs> <laughs> we'll be singing about Kyle's mom. Oh right? yes, Kyle's oh, mom. Yeah. Yes, we were in Canada. They, they killed Kenny. They killed um, Kenny. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, but okay, what's coming around the corner for you, David? Uh, oh man, we just did a deal, and I can't can't uh, talk about it in detail right now. But we're going to be doing a six part uh, six episode podcast series, six, six episode podcast series oh. about the power grid and the crisis with power transformers on our power grid nice. and what it means for for america and that's going to start up in august and i'm really looking forward to doing that we got a, a great new sponsor for that six uh six part series and uh, we'll be rolling that out in the next week or two congratulations that's yeah. awesome it's are awesome. there any books we should read beforehand or would that give it away yeah uh read uh read uh oh my gosh uh sharding, uh, sharding the grid it's sharding great. the grid okay. Angwin is Angwin. i need to get her on the crude truth you've had her on and so have you right yeah you're just yeah you gotta it. you gotta get her I, on. I am I, well i gotta read that book and then there's another gentleman that i've got to read a book on that i want to have on the show that, that uh, but we'll I talk just, about that uh, brutal Stanley. minds brutal minds yes yes Yes. What, what's his last name? Uh, Stanley Ralston? Ridge. Yeah, no, yeah, Stanley Ralston. Ridge. Yeah. Oh, shoot. shoot. I forget. Excuse yeah, me, yeah, He's Sorry. great. It's yes. already been kicking off on my side. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's no. a frightening book. <laughs> Man. Is, I'm halfway through it, and I'm scared to finish it. Wow. Uh, now, he is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate that one. So. Well, first of all, again, I want to say thank you to the Flying Saucer for hosting us again uh, here in Fort Worth, but also to Black Mountain Oil and Gas for uh, putting us somehow <laughs> on it. I mean, thank you, guys. It's very humbling. Um, you know, I learned the other day that it's okay to say um, thank you and, and you're thank welcome. Thank you, yes. Oh, yeah. And uh, so thank you to them uh, for, for putting us on the list with some great people on there. Oh, uh, absolutely. JP, Irina, um, Steve Alex Reese, Epstein, I think. Yeah. Uh, Alex, Alex Epstein's Epstein. on Robert there. Robert Bryce. Uh, Robert Bryce is on there. Uh, so, I mean, what a great group. And uh, and there's even more out there. So, 
Uh, just uh, so I'm sure that was fun or something. So, but thank you guys very much for putting us on. Yep. Uh, but no, uh, be on the lookout. Got another great episode of the Crew Truth. I've got one out right now uh, with Deborah Wald, which kind of changed my whole look on ESG, especially from Isn't oil and gas. It is. And then I mentioned Matthew Lowenstein uh, with um, FSC Inc., another great entrepreneur. Uh, so be looking for more episodes. And then uh, for me, also I'll be at my new studio in Austin for a couple. So be, be on the lookout visually for those. So nice. very excited. Congratulations. We've got a bunch of great stuff going what on. What about My you, gosh, Stu? How about what you, you got? Stu? i got a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, just trying to keep the old nose to the grindstone. I'm hearing a lot of stuff out there about the ESG investors, uh, about real estate investing, and people are kind of nervous, and so they're looking for tax <laughs> deductions because taxes are coming around the corner. Dude. Yes, they are. And I'm talking to a bunch of folks about that. So with that, hey, uh, subscribe, like, Follow these guys, and if you have time, follow me. But again, thank you all very much for stopping by. Three podcasters walk into a bar. We will see you next Bartender. time. Bartender. 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 <laughs> Adios. <laughs> <laughs>